Okay, so let's now talk about what a company is. Now, I can guide you to all the important uh, requirements. So we can talk about it being an artificial legal person, that it can sue and be sued in its own name, it can enter into contracts, it has perpetual succession, it was created by statute, it's managed by directors and owned by shareholders, blah de blah de blah de blah de blah but I actually think it is easier to think about it like this. Before we had a company, if somebody wanted to own something or develop a business or something like that, essentially they would expend their own capital, so spend their own money and acquire assets. So just say I own a railway. I've always wanted to own a railway. See, I have a little diesel 10 here and a couple of little engines and stuff like that actually let me move on to the slide that i want to show you and if i own these assets if something terrible happens let's say i don't own one of the engines they crash it all goes terrible it's all fun and games if you're a four-year-old but people get hurt my engines are damaged there is a point where i am very very worried about actually investing in a company so if i own these assets then my assets i get all of the benefits from exploiting those assets but i also take on all of the risk so essentially the company is i'm using this plastic bag that i'm holding as my metaphor for the legal person the company is separate from me i own the company I am the sole shareholder of the company, but the assets themselves are inside the company. I no longer have ownership of those at all. And over time, as these assets produce money, I have a lot of really big bucks here. They've sold rides on their trains, etc. That money also belongs to the company. Now, over time, as those assets produce money, that could be spent, some of it, take some money out, buy an extra carriage. The company's value continues to grow. If one of those carriages gets broken, it runs out, it comes out, the company's assets shrink. It may be that the value of the company as a whole has gone up or has gone down, but me, Potentially as its sole shareholder, I don't own anything that's inside the company. I only owe the company. The company itself might enter into a range of different contracts and arrangements with third parties, suppliers, with its customers, etc. Those are contracts that the company makes with those individuals. Now the company, that means if the, those promises are broken, those individuals might sue the company. They can't sue me because I am not the company. I am not the one who entered into a contract with them. I am a shareholder of the company. Now, I may also be a manager of the company. I could do that as an employee. I could do it as a director. In fact, I could do both at the same time. And so as an employee of the company, I have a contractual relationship with the company and each fortnight or so the company basically has to take money out and pay it. Oh wow, look how much the company is paying me. Amazing, I must be doing a really good job. But over time, if the company has spent all of its money and can't pay its employees and can't actually meet its obligations to its suppliers, then the company itself may become insolvent, in which case a liquidator or a receiver will come in. It will gather as much money as it can from customers who haven't paid the bill. It will then sell the assets of the company, can sell them to anybody it likes, gets the best price for it, throw some extra money in in exchange for that, and then it basically pays out, hopefully everybody, but essentially the creditors get paid first. After the creditors have been paid, if there is anything left, 
what's remaining goes back to the shareholders. So I just like to think of a company as a little Ziploc bag because it is significantly easier to imagine that the company is separate to us, even though we feel like we're owning the assets. And, and as we go forward, this is going to be really important because one of the biggest issues that we need to get our heads around, if we're thinking about the similarities and differences between companies and DAOs, will be the role that shareholders play and managers play. In the company and the DAO, as we understand it, they are quite different. So questions, concerns, frustrations or compliments, please ask me. And in the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about the role of shareholders and look at a really ancient case, which gives us a really good understanding of the difference between a shareholder, a creditor, and a member, or sorry, a, a member of the board, a director of a company. And that case is called Solomon and Solomon. Uh, and I think it'll be instructive. I look forward to talking to you, talking to you about it. See you there.